welcome all uh, this is the third part of the first lecture uh, on the chemical engineering thermodynamics 2 course and i am narain from the school of chemical and biotechnology shastra so for the last two lectures we have seen what is the role of chemical engineers in the larger context of society and we also saw some of the questions that uh, our information rather a chemical engineer would require to process, uh, build a plant to start thinking of process development and uh, in this concluding part the lecture 3 we will set the tone of uh, where the thermodynamics uh, is required uh, in terms of this uh, larger aspect of chemical engineering we have already seen some of the examples in the second lecture we will try to go a little bit dig dig further uh, to substantiate to convince uh, that what are the questions that you would likely to uh, answer uh, when we read thermodynamics 2. Now if you recollect the lecture 2 we stopped uh, with, an, uh, with the task of finding uh, a styrene production process and I said how are the different sequences selected. Now, uh, if you see like uh, ethyl benzene, now the styrene is produced by dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene. So, that means ethyl benzene dehydrogenates to give styrene and then hydrogen. But this ethyl benzene, uh, this is an uh, endothermic reaction. So, that means uh, uh, this, this step is energy consumption. So, this is endothermic in nature. Uh, whereas, uh, this ethyl benzene can also undergo uh, decomposition to give benzene and ethylene. So, that means one can think of uh, in a reaction system. So, so if you have a reactor system uh, with uh, ethyl benzene going inside and at a temperature and pressure, you not only have styrene, uh, hydrogen, but you all can also expect benzene and ethylene as part of your feed stream. Now, uh, it is very obvious uh, what would be the questions that one would ask uh, if you have to design uh, this process at the beginning is uh, like for example, the first question is uh, uh, will uh, presence of uh, benzene and ethylene, okay, will presence of benzene and ethylene affect uh, the conversion of uh, ethyl benzene to styrene. So, this will be like one question, right. So, that means uh, if this, uh, if we assume what is, uh, if we have to find out what is the maximum conversion that is possible uh, in this uh, decomposition. So, that means where ethylene benzene, sorry, uh, in this dehydrogenation of uh, ethyl uh, benzene to ethylene to hydrogen, uh, ethyl benzene to styrene and hydrogen, sorry. So, that means uh, we need to know whether the presence of uh, benzene and ethylene. So, whether if this uh, decomposition reaction will it affect this dehydrogenation reaction. So, here primarily ethyl benzene decomposes to give its constituent components of benzene and ethylene. So, whether this reaction, this side reaction that is occurring which is not favorable to us, will it affect this uh, dehydrogenation reaction? That would be the first question. And obviously, now we need to worry about the separation process. Now, the separation process is an energy intensive process because uh, uh, this uh, ethylene uh, and ethyl benzene, they fairly uh, differ by about 10 degrees Celsius in boiling point. So, that means you need to have so much energy being spent to separate uh, styrene uh, from ethyl benzene. So, the unconverted ethyl benzene which will also come uh, at the reactor exists. So, it is not only these constant components you will also have unconverted ethyl benzene coming in this component. So, this all this will be sent to a separation unit right and the question is how to get a pure uh, styrene uh, from this uh, component system. So, this is something uh, uh, a chemical engineer thinks about. So, we have seen example one example of chloroform uh, in the lecture uh, 1.2 and now this is an another example where I have shown that uh, suppose if you have a side reaction and not favorable reaction then also we need more we will end up with more constituents in the uh, reaction stream or in the reaction exit stream and uh, we need to worry about how the separation process have to occur how many stages it will undergo 
for how many distillation columns we need to keep and what is the fraction or what is the range or the composition in which these get separated. So, this is uh, again very interesting and uh, you will find lots and lots of these examples in petrochemical where similar uh, circumstances will occur. Uh, now, for example, even this itself can be made a little complex because the styrene itself can undergo uh, polymerization uh, under conditions and become polystyrene uh, if the temperature is favorable enough for it to polymerize. So, that means it is not only these compounds, you may also end up getting polystyrene as something which is totally not uh, uh, expected at this uh, and this reactor. Now, let us go to uh, uh, second uh, uh, and another interesting uh, uh, concept or, or, or observation I want to discuss uh, to make an impact on why thermodynamics is important. Now, have you ever worried about the behavior of a component in a solution? So, what I mean by a, uh, a solution is that a solution contains, it is, this is a system. So, which contains number of components and these components do not have like say I have put blue crosses, black crosses, maybe some are uh, I will put red triangles, then I will put probably green circles. All these are different components that makes up the system and they do not have an individual identity. So, that means the system is seen, the system has its own property and that is not directly the property of the constituent. It is not a physical mixture, it is primarily the solution that we are talking of. This can be either with respect to fluid or uh, I mean either with respect to a gaseous uh, system or with respect to a liquid system. So, in general it could be a fluid system. Now, uh, if you go through examples and if you just browse through the standard reference books, you will know that uh, that like oxygen solubility in uh, fresh water is roughly about of the order of 8 ppm. So, so this is 8 milligram per liter, 8 mg per L. Whereas, if you see the same oxygen concentrity in uh, like sea water or a simulated sea water, let us say with 35 percent salinity is roughly around uh, 6.5 ppm. So, that means uh, there is a fair reduction in the oxygen solubility. So, if if we uh, show this by an example, let us say this is what uh, we are talking of. Let us say I, I take a beaker, ok, I close, it is a closed system. So, here I have water. So, this is uh, pure water or I would say fresh water without any dissolved uh, electrolytes in it and let us say you have oxygen in the gas phase. So, this is oxygen in the gas phase, ok. So, this is uh, uh, the liquid, the liquid contains only water. So, primarily oxygen uh, goes here and the saturation is established when this is around 8 ppm, right. Uh, the saturation solubility is 8 ppm. Now, in case if the same water contains uh, some uh, dissolved solids, the electrolytes, let us say if you take a sea water and you take sodium chloride as a primary constituent of salinity. So, that means which is at 35 percent for sea water. Then this uh, 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 concentration, this saturated concentration goes down uh, to 6 point ppm. So, that means the solubility of oxygen in water is affected. In this case, it is decreased is affected by other constituents, other constituents in water. Now, the interesting question is why this happens? Why this happens? And this is a, a reason of curiosity. So, that means we are very curious to find out why a presence of an another constituents affect the solubility of water, a uh, solubility of oxygen in water. And if we know this why this happens, can we quantify it? How to quantify it? So, that means unless we quantify it, we will not be able to extend it to engineering application. So, we have to fare uh, from this uh, observations, we need to know that how can, what is the reason behind this decrease? And if we know the reason behind this decrease, can we evolve 
an expression can we evolve and model to quantify this so that for any other water so for any other water containing any different other uh, electrolytes or a different composition so this is at a standard composition salinity of 35 percent suppose if we give like 40 per uh, let's say 20 percent salinity or 30 percent salinity can we then predict what should be the composition so this is something that would be interesting and uh, this is uh, focused as part of your solution thermodynamics. Uh, the next uh, uh, curiosity driven example which I want to do is like is on solution volume. Now you can do this experiment if you have an access to lab you take like they say 100 ml uh, burette right rinse it well and ensure this wicket is dry. Uh, you just fill this burette with 50 ml of uh, water so preferably uh, distilled water but if if you don't have access to distilled water you can still use your tap water nothing wrong in that and use 50 ml of ethanol let's say for example right so so if you add 50 ml of water and 50 ml of ethanol to 100 ml burette you reach this 100 ml mark so if you have a burette uh, column so let's say this is the dose part right let us assume that uh, this this is 150 ml and this is a 100 ml mark let us assume that you are first uh, filled with the uh, water so this is filled with water till the 50 ml mark and then you have filled uh, this with ethanol uh, for an another 50 ml and reach the center of mark. All you have to do is I would wish that you close this top okay probably with a cork and then rinse this and this turn upside down mix it. So that means vigorously mix this for a few minutes and you would be surprised uh, that the liquid mark would have come down. So that means uh, this would no longer be at 100 ml probably this mark would have been let us slightly about let's say about 98 ml okay, this, this is some numbers i'm just throwing out so you can be able to read the numbers when you do this experiment so let's say there is a decrease of about 2 ml okay now why is this happening so you took a 50 ml of water 50 ml of ethanol and uh, we expect that if you mix 50 ml and 50 ml you should get 100 ml which you eventually got at the beginning but only when you just mixed it rigorously turned upside down the bureau to mix these two fluids it eventually contracted and just gave uh, 98 ml and roughly about let's say 2 ml of uh, water is being lost uh, 2 ml of the total solution uh, uh, of this uh, is lost now can we explain this phenomenon of reduction in volume right so that means can we explain this concept of reduction in volume of uh, solution okay upon mixing and is it possible to quantify now this is not only a curiosity driven experiment this makes very important in terms of like a storage uh, vessel so that means your storage vessel might not hold what you actually do at the beginning if you are making aqueous solution now just think uh, what is the reverse so suppose is there any liquid like say if a liquid 1 plus liquid 2 you mix and the uh, to get a system L such that the volume of L is greater than volume of L1 plus volume of L2 can you look for these kinds of example because in this example which I thought the total volume decreases uh, from the sum of individual volumes but uh, you can browse through the literature you can browse to other experiments uh, of typical physical chemistry solutions and find out that there are also examples where the total volume of the system is actually more than the independent volume. So that means to say like suppose if you have here uh, uh, 50 ml and 50 ml so this is 50 ml 50 ml this could be like say 103 ml. So that means uh, suddenly you got there is an expansion in the system. This is again much more uh, critical in terms of storage vessels or like bottles when you pack it and handle such aqueous solution. 
So, this is an another uh, interesting observation which uh, I want to discuss and with this we will conclude uh, this lecture 1 uh, uh, focusing on just the gist of points that we covered. So, we saw what are the role of chemical engineer as a profession and in that uh, there is a lot of information or questions uh, a chemical engineer needs to answer before he takes up process development and of this the things that we are going to focus in this course on chemical engineering thermodynamics is to find out whether the reactions are feasible. If the reaction is feasible, then what is the maximum possible theoretical conversion that one can expect in a reaction? And obviously, uh, you have a mixture of components that form a solution, and how to find out uh, the different means of uh, separating the, uh, the components from the solution. We are per se not going to design the equipment, we are not going to focus on what is the height or the diameter, the volume of the equipment that does, but we are trying to focus on the science behind the separation, whether is a separation possible, if the separation is possible, to what extent it is possible, that is what we are trying to answer. And obviously, to the uh, some of the property uh, uh, of a component, how it is being affected in a solution. This is what the example that I uh, told you also, like the solution of volume of mixing is different. Uh, uh, it reduces in some cases and it, there are also cases where it extends. So, can we f uh, find out the reasoning for this uh, property change of a component in a solution. So, this uh, gives you the fair idea of what is expected in solution thermodynamics and obviously these three, these are all very important for a chemical engineer to perform his duty in in producing a component of interest, producing a chemical of interest. So, I hope uh, this is convincing to you on why solution thermodynamics is important. Now, with this I will end the first lecture and uh, let us meet in the lecture 2 of uh, this chemical engineering thermodynamics course. Thank you for your patient watching and this is Naren uh, from Shastra. Thank you all.